Hello guys, welcome to the world of English exams. Today we are going to cover a very common question type that you see in IELTS listening that is form completion. Uh, this is one of the important question types that is most frequently seen in the listening test and uh, when you are preparing for the IELTS test you have to bear this in mind that uh, answering questions such as form completion is very easy and it is very scoring as well. So uh, do understand what it means and how you should solve it using very simple methods and first step is to identify that question type. So once you identify and you know how to practice with the relevant uh, examples and tips, it is not at all a difficult question type guys. So uh, do stay tuned till the end of the video and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel World of English Exams. So what are we waiting for? Let's start today's video by overviewing the IELTS test. So basically the test is divided into two modules academic and general and uh, whether you are writing the academic or the general training test, there are four parts that is listening, reading, writing and speaking. All the four parts have to be attempted by all the test takers regardless of the module which they are selecting. So basically the listening and the speaking tests are the same whether you are attempting the academic test or the general training test. The difference arises only in the reading and writing tests. So uh, since we are discussing about listening tests, you don't need to be worried too much even if you are taking the uh, computer delivered test or the paper delivered test, paper based test. So it is the same. So now let's see how many uh, sections are there in the listening test and then we will specifically guide you um, about how to answer form completion questions. Okay, so in the listening test basically there are four sections and there are a total of 40 questions that have to be answered. The first section in the listening test is called a dialogue in which you will hear a conversation between two people on a general discussion or a general concept such as let's say booking a hotel room or managing an interview or arranging for a job or maybe uh, you are you're a, a student who is searching for accommodation or you want to join a sports club or something like that. So in the second section the discussion is not there and it is called a monologue which means the, the talk is presented by one speaker only. So there is no involvement of the second speaker and it is like a, more or less uh, a, an instruction kind of thing. For example, let's say you are uh, on a tour and the tourist guide is giving you some instructions. So uh, being a visitor, uh, being a tourist, we do not have much to say because we do not know about that place. So it is the responsibility of the tourist guide to guide us properly. So the main point of discussion revolves around one speaker. That's the reason it's called a monologue. Then the test proceeds to section 3 and from here you will uh, get to hear uh, more academic discussion. It is not at all a general discussion. It is uh, a discussion between 2 to 4 speakers related to their education studies. So something like a PowerPoint presentation or a seminar or getting the doubts clarified by a tutor or something like that. So the discussion is completely based on education and its related uh, subjects and all that. Then finally the section 4 is called a monologue and this is a university lecture. So you will hear a lecturer giving a talk or presentation on some topic which is significant in the university education and each and every section uh, contains 10 questions and these 10 questions can be of any one of the types which we are discussing below but do remember that the question types can be repeated. For example, if you see multiple choice questions in part 2 or section 2, it does not mean that uh, multiple choice uh, will not be given in any other section. So you can get any question type in any section of the test. So you have to be prepared to answer any sort of question and uh, for that what is important is to know how to identify and how to tackle each and every question type because it's not the easy task to do it guys. You require some strategy in order to solve it and uh, we have already started uploading a series of videos on listening for each and every question type uh, mainly for table completion, for uh, multiple choice questions, note completion and all that. So please do check our YouTube channel if you wish to know the information with the relevant tips. Now let's see how many types of questions are there and they will, then we will focus on 
uh, the question type for today that will be form completion. So clearly you can see that there are various types of questions that are asked in the listening test such as note completion, sentence completion, form completion that we are uh, doing now. Then there is flowchart completion and table completion. So these five categories come under fill in the blanks. Then other than fill in the blanks, we have map labeling, diagram labeling, matching and multiple choice. So these are the different types of questions that we have. And it is very, very important to uh, learn the strategy individually to tackle these question types. And uh, because there are various types of questions, you, you have to understand that using a single technique, you cannot get the answers for all of these. Uh, what is very important is to understand the different question types and then learn the tips for that. So in this process, today we are going to learn about form completion. So now let's see that. So first of all, this is how a form will look like. And if you see, uh, this form completion is uh, taken from Cambridge past papers, uh, mainly from Cambridge series 9 or Cambridge book 9. Then you can see that uh, the first column, the first uh, segment of the form completion uh, tells the question numbers that is from 1 to 10. And next one says the instructions that is complete the form below. So this is an indication that uh, you require to complete the form which is given. And uh, in any sort of form, you will have something which is common, something like uh, name, date of birth, country of origin and email address some cases and then you have telephone numbers or such other things. Uh, learning and practicing all these basic uh, elements of listening are very very important guys and we are very soon going to come up with uh, some basic videos for you such as uh, let's say listening to phone numbers or listening to names and how well you identify them and such others so do stay tuned to our channel then after uh, the instructions comes the very important point that is word instructions this is a very very crucial point many students make a mistake by not reading this so please pay attention to the word instructions and here it signifies one word and or or a number so which means you can write a word along with that you can also write a number so instead of that you can also have a choice to write a number now this is very confusing that's why uh, what i have done is that i have made a separate uh, uh, slide for this and I'm going to tell you that uh, let's look at this point very very clearly because once we start listening to the audio it's very very difficult to come back to the basic things okay so this is what is the detailed information about word instructions uh, on the left hand side you can see uh, that I have specified just the word instructions and on the right side I have given word plus number instructions so it is alpha numeric instruction so let, first let's see the uh, word instructions one word only so if the instruction says one word only then you do not have a choice to write the second word any answer which you hear has to be written in one word only so you have to be very careful in eliminating the one which you don't require and not just eliminating the word guys uh, but after you write it you have to cross check and verify if that word is properly fitting the context or not that is a very important thing not just grabbing the word but understanding whether it is suitable to the given context or not is the key then we have no more than two words it means that the upper limit or the maximum word limit is two words and the minimum word limit is one word so just because you see this instruction you should not assume that every answer has to be written in two words some of them may be written in a single word also then no more than three words which means the maximum number of words in which you can write the answer is three words and the minimum uh, word limit still remains to be one word and in all these instructions you you did not see that you can write a number so hence it is forbidden for you to write the numerical form of the answer so please write the uh, word format or the spelling of it now let's move on to the second one which says numbers as well as words the first instruction one word and or or a number this means you can write one word one number or both i repeat you can write one word one number or both of them so you can write one word plus one number 
and don't worry too much about uh, the number of words here it, see here they are giving you an instruction that it is a number that means you don't have an option to write the second number and how many ever number of digits are there guys it is still considered to be a single number in the listening test you have to bear that in mind then no more than two words and or or a number which means you can write two words and a number or just a number you can also write one word along with a number then no more than three words and or or a number so this is what signifies the word and uh, number instructions which is very very important for us and very critical in solving fill in the blanks questions in the listening test then we have to see what is the title it's very very important to mark the title and mark the keywords here accommodation form so this form is related to accommodation and that too it is for giving student information so uh, all the information which is related to a student will be noted down in this form and we can see that there are seven questions given here and uh, the answers whatever you hear will be in a sequence you need not worry too much about it the answers will be in a sequence so even if you are missing out on one column you don't need to worry too much please leave it there and and keep progressing as the audio proceeds do not stay back at one question because uh, we do not know that we are maybe we are going to miss out on the other questions as well on the following questions okay so uh, let's analyze how to improve your score in form completion and i'm going to give you some very very basic tips guys and if you follow them i'm sure that everyone can solve this uh, form completion question type without any hassle so let's uh, see some points to remember the first point as i uh, say every time read the instructions carefully there lies the secret of your success so if you are avoiding or if you are overlooking the instructions then that will be a major hurdle in scoring then the second one note the word count from the instructions just now we have understood that point clearly isn't it then the audio will be played once only so in the main exam you don't have an option to stop um, or maybe pause the audio and you cannot rewind it back as well so you have to pay attention to each and every detail that uh, is played on the audio and the only way that you can master this is through practice then form completion questions are generally seen in section 1 of the listening test but uh, nevertheless it can be given in any section you have to be prepared for that guys then uh, it is very important to understand the various sections of the test and if you remember i have already taken you through that in a detailed manner uh, about the four sections that you have in the listening test then the answers will be heard in a sequence so you don't need to worry too much about it and synonyms will be used that is the most critical thing at this point of time synonyms which are also called parallel expressions are uh, different words which have the same meaning and you should not expect that the exact words will be heard in the audio as you see in the question paper definitely synonyms will be used you have to prepare for that and practice accordingly then the final tip is sometimes you will hear the information which is not at all essential for you so that is called non essential information you should try to avoid listening to that or don't pay close attention to that because anyway you are not going to use it for uh, answering the questions so you have to have a clear overview and a brief understanding of how to answer form completion i hope this video was useful in uh, telling you and explaining you what is form completion and how to answer it so follow these tips and score well so till i see you with the next informative video regarding ielts happy preparation guys and i hope you will follow these instructions and uh, please do leave us a comment uh, on how you like this video and we will be more than happy to receive your comments thank you so much for listening and watching the video